LTC USA making its debut on the New York Stock Exchange. The stock is listed as ATUS, ATIS, that's the ticker. Shares opened at $30, but uh, they closed at $32.71. The IPO raised more money than any other U.S. listed telecom service in the last 17 years. And the CEO of LTS believes there is a lot of room for growth. There continues to be great opportunities for the telecom sector. Um, that investors uh, out there uh, have a lot of confidence in what we can achieve, have a lot of confidence in what the telecom sector as a whole, us and our peers, uh, can do going forward. So I think this is a validation more for the entire sector than anything. And Altice USA is the parent company of I-24 News. For more, I'm joined by John Tuttle. He is the global head of listings at the New York Stock Exchange. John, good to have you with us. Great to be with you, Michelle. So, John, the Altice IPO, a very big deal. In fact, the biggest telecom IPO since 2000. What do you think this means for the sector? Well, first of all, it was an incredibly exciting morning, not only for Altice, but for the New York Stock Exchange. And to have the opportunity to have a great entrepreneur like Patrick, the, of the chairman of Altice, Dexter, the CEO, Charlie, the CFO there, on the trading floor with the traders, watching the price discovery process play out and seeing a textbook executed IPO, flawless executed IPO, was really exciting. You know, the IPO market is doing quite well this year. We're encouraged not only for the telecom sector, but a lot of other sectors. The, the IPO window has reopened after what was arguably a very slow year globally last year for capital raising. Well. Altis is uh, the second largest IPO of 2017. Of course, we had that Snap IPO, the parent company of Snapchat. Is it surprising that Altis was the second biggest? No, and actually, you know, the New York Stock Exchange, one of the things that, that we do best is execute large, complex transactions like large IPOs. So we had the Snap IPO earlier this year, which raised several billion dollars. We had the Altice IPO that raised several billion dollars. And they choose to come to the market and come to the New York Stock Exchange because they know they're going to get a great, a great IPO. But, but John, the Snap IPO, there has been a poor performance in the stock um, since the IPO. Does that have any impact on deal flow? You know, it doesn't because the market conditions are right for IPO activity. If you think about it, interest rates are low and stable. The VIX has been low and stable. Asset prices and indexes are flirting with their record highs. And most IPOs have performed quite well, not only in the weeks, but the, but the months following their IPO. So there's a renewed sense of optimism about the IPO market. Oh, but do you still have a sense that private companies are staying private for longer because they're managing to get the capital, of course, is the advantage of uh, you know, fewer regulations. Is, there, is that what's holding some of these big tech names from listing, there have been some that, of course, were, we've been anticipating, like Airbnb. Well, who knows what's happening with Uber now? <laughs> but prior to the CEO crisis, Uber, for example, is it the, the, the fact that the private market is doing so well holding back these big tech IPOs? Well, look, there is a lot of private capital and it is being allocated to a lot of these technology companies. But as interest rates continue to raise, many of those companies will need to have an exit via the public markets. So when they're ready to come to the markets, we'll be ready to receive them. And in terms of what you have in the pipeline, which sectors are offering the most IPOs? You know, we're incredibly excited. There's a lot of deal flow coming from many different sectors. One area that has cooled down a little bit from the first half of the year is energy. Energy, and that's with oil right. prices going sub $50 a barrel. But we're excited about technology, telecom, and many other sectors. The pipeline is strong for the second half of 2017 and beyond. Now, uh, the, the Trump presidency, of course, uh, pr uh, promises of tax reform and deregulation that caused the so-called Trump bump. Or we're seeing it maybe <laughs> taper off a little bit. But keeping in mind, the S&P still up 8% uh, year to date. The Nasdaq over 15% year to date. Do you think that this uh, rally can be sustained? You know, I have the good fortune of speaking with CEOs every day, and there truly is a renewed sense of optimism that there will be a shot at meaningful tax reform, that there will be regulatory review, and that the economic conditions in the United States will be ripe for even more growth. And that bodes well for the IPO market as well. So you think that the rally will continue and it's going to encourage further IPO activity? Well, I don't have a crystal ball. Anything can change. But speaking with uh, business leaders, we are encouraged by what's going on in the marketplace. All right. John Tuttle, thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Well